Hi guys, it's Alex from Redline. We are here today with our friend, Brian Eslick from How To Automotive. And we're gonna be going deep on the technical today. We're talking about the most common check engine lights that come into the shop and how to take care of those quickly, efficiently, with 100% accuracy using a smoke machine. Like she said, the most common check engine light are some uh, are EVAP and, uh, and trim controls such as uh, Lean Bank 1, Bank 2, uh, code. So we're going to hook up the smoke machines here and kind of show you guys, you know, some techniques of uh, testing that out. Maybe also do a little theory on how uh, EVAP systems work. So Brian, give me a quick overview about the EVAP system. How does it work? Why is it there? What's the function? So the purpose of the fuel tank and the EVAP system is to uh, not allow the fuel vapors to escape into the atmosphere, but at the same time the fuel system has to breathe. So you got the fuel tank you got your, your uh, canister and you got your, your different your vent valves and purge valves and they all work together in, uh, and the purpose of the charcoal canister is to uh, not allow the hydrocarbons to be vented into the atmosphere which is a bad thing if you live in California you'll see that brown smog and you, you know the vent is uh, naturally open all the time and allowing air to flow through the system but it doesn't allow the fuel va vapors to escape because it flows through a uh, charcoal canister first and then uh, attracts the, uh, the fuel vapors and then allows the fresh air to vent out in the atmosphere. So if you were to fill up your tank with gas through here through the filler neck and if it was not venting, what would happen is that the pressures would build up and it would shut off your fuel tank so you could only get like 20 cents in at a time. And then at a later time, it, it, it purged into the engine. That way you reburn the fuel, reburn, reburn the vapor. So that's kind of the basics of the uh, EVAP system. This is great information. It's a great reminder about why the EVAP system is so important. We all want clean air. We all want to make sure the emissions are under control, right? We all want to be healthy and have our families be healthy. Yeah. And this is essential. It also explains why the check engine light comes on yeah. when there's a problem with the EVAP system and why that vehicle is coming into the shop. So when a car comes in the shop and they've got a check engine light on, Walk us through the steps. As a technician, what do you do? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is interview the customer and kind of verify the problem. So, so we just get a little information on the problems, when the problem happens. And then uh, once we've done that, next thing we do, we're gonna hook up a scan tool and pull the codes and then verify, you know, these codes exist or whatever. And the next thing we say, if it's an EVAP code, the next thing you want to do is you want to understand what type of EVAP system that you're working with. So you'll look up the criteria of, of the uh, code. So each manufacturer has slightly different names for all the parts and each manufacturer has slightly different ways of testing for all the, uh, the systems. So you look up uh, test procedure uh, criteria or code setting criteria. And then from there, you're off and running. So if it's a large EVAP leak, one of the best ways to test for that is to hook up a smoke machine. So you'll hook up the smoke machine, you're going to inject smoke into the system and then you're going to close it off. So you're going to close the, the purge valve is normally closed automatically, but you need to close the vent system off and that seals the system. Now you're able to look for leaks and uh, if it passes that, then you're going to go to your computer side and you're going to look for uh, pressure sensors, uh, leak detection pumps, those type of things to make sure that those are operating. So, that's kind of the gist of how for so large EVAPs. Sorry, when you close the system off and you um, connect the smoke machine, yeah. um, where are you? Are you going through a vent valve or a purge valve? How are you, how's the smoke getting in the system? So you have two ports of entry, basically. One is, well actually I would say three ports of entry. So one is the service port, which you see here on this board here. And then some vehicles don't have service ports, so you would basically go from the purge side, you take the line off, and you would smoke back. And so then, life's easy if you have an EVAP test port yeah, with the green. But manufacturers are going away from that because these are a known source of leaks, mm -hmm. so they're going away from those. Uh, so you may or may not see a service port. So the next place you would enter to test it would be through the uh, fuel neck itself. So you could enter smoke in through the fuel neck. The only drawback about entering in from the fuel neck is you eliminated the gas cap, so you have to test the gas cap separately to make sure that that's not the problem or leaking. So if there's a leak in the system at that point, let's take a look and see what that would look like. Okay. So one of the reasons why you would want to go through the fuel neck or fuel cap is time. 
when you pump uh, smoke in through this system, it has to fill all this chamber, everything up. So it takes a lot longer for the smoke to fill the whole system up. So if you're worried, worried about time, you can use something like the uh, Easy EVAP here, and you're going to hook it up. This car, this application we're here, we're showing here is the capless uh, system. So it requires this little uh, adapter here that has like a little pass through, and it holds the uh, flapper doors open. So you're going to insert the the adapter here and you got to push it in until it's fully seated in there and it's flush. You want to make sure that the fuel neck is clean. Uh, clean. Okay. So it has these little uh, double-sided tapes that uh, stick to the, um, the tool and um, so you'll stick it one on this on this portion of the tool you peel off the outer layer and now you're able to attach it so you just center it on the cap make sure it's clean put it on there and give it a little press and that'll hold it on. Now you're able to hook up your smoke machine right through the uh, pass-through port right here. And you're in, ready to inject the smoke. So when you're done with that, that portion, you found your leak in your repairs. To remove it, you just kind of give it a little twist and pull it off. And don't forget your adapter tool out of the inside. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about hooking up through the EVAP test port. And uh, the way you're gonna do it is take, you're gonna look for the green cap. Uh, and once you remove the cap, Inside the cap is going to be a Schrader valve. Now, Redline does not put a, a detent tab in here, and one of the reasons why is it restricts flow of the amount of flow. So, you're going to need to take the Schrader valve out. The Schrader it comes with a Schrader valve tool, but the Schrader valve is opposite threads than your, your normal standard threads. So, you're going to go righty loosey to remove the, uh, the Schrader valve tool or the Schrader valve. Now you're ready to hook up the adapter that comes with your smoke machine. Screw it onto the test port. Now you can take your smoke machine and hook up just like that. You're ready to test. Easy. Yep. And then when you're going back together, just make sure that you uh, screw your straighter valve in and you want to screw it opposite what you would think and you want to go left to tighten it up and you don't want to bear it down just till it's snug and that's it. Okay I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how your total tech is going to work once you get it. So basically you're going to hook on your shop air supply to the hose in the back. So you're going to hook it up to a 12 volt battery source. Once you got it hooked up to a 12 volt battery source the machine's ready to go. So now you're going to push the on button which is right underneath the flow gauge here. So once you push the on button it's, it's uh, warming up the, uh, the oils inside and creating the smoke. Now you got the flow gauge here, so you're going to hook it up to your vehicle. Once you got it hooked up to your vehicle, now all you have to do is dial in your flow gauge here. And if you look here, this flow gauge immediately went to the top. That indicates a leak, and as the ball drops in this gauge, it will tell you if it's a 30 thousandths leak, a 20 thousandths, a 10 thousandths, or under 10 thousandths leak. Talk to us a little bit about the flow meter and the pressure gauge and why that's important in the tool you choose. Okay, so the flow gauge is your basic gauge that pretty much all smoke machines have and you would operate it by turning the valve and, and start the uh, smoke flowing through. If there's a, a very small leak in, a, in the system at all, the, uh, the leak down gauge here will, will basically verify it. So you would shut your gauge off and if the, this needle was to bleed off in any way, shape or form, that means that there's still a leak in the system. So this is a more fine-tuned gauge to, uh, to look for those, you know, 10,000 or smaller leak, basically. So those are really hard to find leaks. Yeah, really hard to The find. ones that you've looked everywhere, you're going to set this up, right? You're going to close yeah. it off, and if this begins to move, yeah. that tells us that there's a leak. So one of the common codes is lean codes. Now, I recommend that you also look into the EVAP system because it's directly linked to the engine. The engine is drawing vacuum onto the EVAP system, so don't rule, don't leave that opportunity to check the EVAP system. Just because the check engine light may or may not be on for an EVAP code, you can still have a leak in the EVAP system. Those can be a mechanical problem or those can be electrical problems. We want to rule out the mechanical problems, so we use the smoke machines. We hook up through the intake system, through vacuum ports, through uh, uh, brake booster hoses, that type of thing. And we're looking for, basically we're looking for vacuum leaks uh, in the system or unmetered air in the system. So using the smoke machine will help you diagnose those type of problems. Unmetered air is a big problem, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about if you have an unmetered air leak, what that's going to do in the system? So basically what happened is you have the metered side, which is usually your mass airflow sensor or a pressure sensor, and it's 
telling the computer how much air is coming in, but if you have something over here off the side that's sucking in air, now it has no idea that additional air is there, so it can't control the fuel trims. So the computer doesn't know how long to uh, use the injector pulse, uh, that type of thing. So it can throw off all kinds of parameters. Uh, it can get, make your fuel mileage go crazy. It can also create misfires such as at idle. Uh, you know, it can cause a lot of problems. So as a consumer, as a driver, the thing that I noticed when I had this problem with an unmetered air leak was that all of a sudden my fuel economy plummeted and I was just pouring gas into the car, but it seemed like nothing else was wrong. So yeah. you fix that kind of problem for your customers, they're going to be pretty happy with you. Yeah, you're going to save your customers some money by fixing those problems because that's going to affect their wallet right off the bat. And also if you're doing any type of emissions testing, uh, that it'll fail for that because it'll show up in the, uh, in the uh, four gas analyzer if it's an older vehicle or it'll show up in the check engine light. A code for an intake leak is one of the most common. Yes. Tell us about how you approach that as a technician. A common reason for intake codes or lean codes would be an intake leak. So we need to tap into the intake system. So we're going to hook up through either through the throttle body, vacuum hoses, those type of things. And we're going to rule out uh, vacuum leaks, uh, intake leaks. Mm -hmm. Lean codes can also be caused by exhaust leaks because what they do is they interfere with the, uh, the oxygen sensor or the air fuel ratio sensor. So one of the things you can do is you could hook up your smoke machine through the back end of the exhaust and inject smoke in and you can look for leaks. So if you have a leak just before the oxygen sensor, it's gonna suck that air in and, and disrupt the uh, reading of it. So using the smoke machine to find the pinhole in the exhaust system can help you out too. These large and especially small leaks are impossible to find without using a smoke machine. Yeah, the different. way they used to do it is they would vaporize right yeah. different chemicals and now you're breathing them which is yeah that, really that, dangerous that was some of the techniques um, some of the other techniques for finding them was uh, they would inject dyes and stuff like that into the systems and stuff and uh, and uh, then that creates other problems so so mm -hmm. now the smoke is the best way to find those so one quick note on the smoke producing fluid uh, the visible vapor producing fluid and that's that you don't need to have dyes or other contaminants like scents and things. Um, th there's a risk. Some automakers say that they can coat sensors, and once they're in the system, you're never getting it out again. So, you know, we use um, a red line, um, uses a pure hydrocarbon that is used throughout the system. It's, this is the same material that's used to clean eggs before people eat them, um, that's used in makeup removers. It's, it is not a baby oil, but it is a Chevron Superla type of visible vapor producing fluid that's ultra clean. And so uh, you wanna be careful that whatever type of machine you're using, you're using something that not only is ultra clean, but that is going to produce a highly dense visible vapor that's easy to see. You want that to really pop you know, when you look at it, so you don't need anything else in it. And it's really, really inexpensive. You get over 100 tests um, yeah. per ounce, and so it just, it lasts a really long time. Um, you can, you know, order from us or anyone and don't charge much for it. Uh, it's uh, safe for the vehicle, it's safe for the technician, it's safe for the environment, so it's, it's a really important part. When you're testing an EVAP system and you come across your leak and you make that repair, don't call that good. What I recommend you do is retest the whole system and test the entire system all the way through. And that way you're 100% sure because you can have multiple leaks in multiple places, or you can have a leak and you can also have one of the switches or vent valve or purge valve or leak detection pump or whatever the system is have a malfunction also. So you don't want to uh, give that customer car back and still be a second problem. So verify your repairs. Let me add one thing to that. Because you're going into different parts of the system, it's not out of the question that you might accidentally introduce a leak yeah, yeah, when you reassemble as, everything. Such as the uh, Schrager valve here, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why having two t in ports of entry to test from is a good idea. So you could, you could uh, verify that this is not leaking by testing through the back port. So after the repair is done, you do another quick test, it's under 10 minutes, and you're basically ensuring that it's fixed right the first time, your customer is going to leave happy, they're not going to be a comeback, they're not going to take any more of your time, yeah. and the customer's going to be yours. Brian, we're talking about uh, EVAP systems in traditionally aspirated gasoline vehicles, right? You know, there's a lot in the news these days about electric vehicles, they're everywhere. 
but really, like, what's the percentage of electric vehicles that you see? I see maybe three or four percent hybrid cut type vehicles, and maybe one or two full electric vehicles a year. So I'm so not seeing a whole So it's very small. Yeah. So this is really something that you need to be able to do day in, day out in your business. Yeah. And um, you know, stay up to date on EVAP, on intake, exhaust, yeah. lean codes. This is essential. Yeah, this is essential. These, and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, they're not going away. The, the com internal combustion engine's here to stay for a long time. You have to be able to uh, do EVAP, lean codes, intake, exhaust, in your day-to-day -day business, yeah. if you're a technician, if you're running a shop that's out there. Um, the ROI on making an investment, whether it's this type of smoke machine or someone else's to do this type of testing, is gonna pay for itself pretty quickly. The, typically, what we hear in the field is 30 days or less, but really, if it's uh, a situation that it's a hard-to-find small leak, oh. it could be much quicker. Oh, uh, definitely, I would say less than 30 days to re retain your money back, especially in the shop environment. In the shop environment, it's, it's a must to have a smoke machine. You're going to make your money back in, I, I would say, a couple days, actually. Uh, uh, we're able to fix four to five cars a week or more with EVAP uh, leaks using the uh, smoke machines. Um, One of the things that I hear from technicians in the field is that using this technology, it not only saves them time on doing the diagnostic, but um, two things. One, it frees up more experienced technicians because this is so simple to do, right? More experienced technicians can then work on more complex problems. And then the second thing is that using this as a diagnostic on every vehicle that comes in the shop, they find additional repairs that the customer may not, may not have brought in. But ultimately, you know, that customer is going to be happy that they're not stranded out on the road when something goes wrong. So, you know, you're really going above and beyond to give them excellent service. In the meanwhile, you're finding additional repairs that your shop is then able to do. Oh, yeah. Um, we, these aren't just EVAP or EVAP testing equipment. You can test the engine side for lean codes. Uh, you can get creative, like uh, say if you have a whistle noise coming out of, the, uh, out of your windows on the, on the car, you can put a fan inside the vehicle and then close up everything and then, and then run the smoke machine around the, uh, the window. And if there's a leak inside your car, the smoke will blow, will blow away and you know that's where my leak is. So you can get creative with the uh, smoke machine. Yeah, it creates a positive cabin pressure. Yeah. So if you turn the ignition on and um, put it on fresh air, yeah. right? Yeah. So the car's off, yeah. but the ignition's on, fresh air, on high. Yeah close everything up, it's pretty amazing. You go around the outside of there and you can you can see it so yeah. obviously. Yeah, it'll blow the smoke away. Yeah, yeah. it's disturbed, right? Yeah, yeah. And you think about all the time that can be spent trying to find like, oh, I had a car one time that had a water leak around the windshield that drove me nuts. Yeah. It, it was so difficult to find. Yeah. And you know, it, it wasn't actually the seal ultimately, but uh, those things can, can really be difficult. And for a customer, it, it, you know, it, it can really challenge your relationship with your technician if you're having to bring your vehicle back multiple times for something that seems to the customer should be simple. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and like to thank Redline for inviting me up to uh, go over some of the most common co codes that are out there. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining us for this technical webinar. We are um, really happy to be able to work with you. Please call us at Redline if we can help support you in any way. We have ASC certified master techs here in the building real life people right here in Orange, California that are super smart and really friendly and really available to help you if you're in the middle of a process or in the middle of a repair. Um, we really do love to hear from you, so reach out to us. Just a huge thank you to our friend Brian Eslick from How To Automotive for you know just really giving us a great education here on EVAP systems and um, all of the most common check engine light codes. So thank you, Brian, this was super great. You guys, please comment, give us feedback on it because we would love to hear how we can help you out in the field.